Well, hello and welcome to Modular Curiosity Season 2, Episode 7. Hey guys, remember me? How have you been? Yeah, I thought I'd uh, give it a try and start doing some episodes again. Uh, hey, let's jump right into it. Uh, let's talk about comparators. Now, comparators may not seem like all that cool, awesome sort of module, but I think we're going to find that there's all kinds of interesting stuff that we can use comparators for. So, what is a comparator? Well, let's dive right in and I'll tell you. Okay, the comparator I have found that I really like is the Hetrick CV comparator. And let's zoom a bit so we can see this even better. And what a comparator does is there is an input signal, which in this case is our purple sine wave. And there is a threshold voltage, which currently I have set by this dual attenuator, uh, mainly so that we could see it here in the scope. And every time the input signal is higher than the threshold, the gate here goes high. Now, one of the things I like about this particular comparator is that we have a gate that will go high as it crosses. We have a trigger that will go high. Let's see if we can catch it. Oh, yeah, right there, right there. There it is. See it? Boom, there it is. It's just a trigger. So a trigger, as you'll remember from our episode long ago on our episode Gates and Triggers, a trigger is simply a pulse that goes, boom, hey, something happens. It's a marker. Something fired off. You got a pulse that said this happened at this moment. The gate, which is what's happening here, as long as something is above this threshold, it's on. You've opened the gate and the gate stays open until you're below the threshold. So that means you could have something run for the entire time that the comparator says is positive. So we have that option. On this side, however, let's run this over here. And you'll notice the two lines flipping because in the Hetra comparator, this side is a negative gate that it does exactly opposite. The purple line goes high whenever the signal is below the threshold and it's exactly the opposite of the other gate. And of course, we have a trigger that does exactly the same thing. How about this guy? This is a trigger that fires whenever the line gets crossed. Let's see if we can catch it. Yep, there it is. I'll slow down time, see if we can catch it. There it is. Boom, there it is. So you have all kinds of interesting ways to do it. Now, I'm using the dual attenuverter so that we can see the threshold. If I didn't use that, Okay, this is, this is always a little difficult to show without, without the other line. But what I have here is the threshold is really high. In fact, it would be about here. Uh, I'll tell you what, let me show it this way. Even though this line is not where the threshold is, There we go. So I'm going to show it this way. This blue line is now not going to the threshold. The threshold is adjusted with this knob. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm drawing you a line so you can see about where the threshold is. So notice that as the orange, as the purple line crosses this blue line, which has nothing to do with this threshold, I just have it set to the same voltage. This goes high. Now as I turn this down, it's equivalent to turning this threshold line down. See, So if I turn this way down close to zero, this would be high quite a bit because, let's see, yeah, that's pretty close because this threshold is set to about that level. And you can see whenever this crosses the line, it goes low, and every time it's above the line, it, it's high. So you can have a control voltage determining your threshold, or you can set it here. The only reason I like doing it this way is so I can see where that line is. And when I'm setting up a patch, it's nice to say, oh, whenever this line crosses, 
that happens. Okay, so what use is this? Well, there's all kinds of things. Let's go look at the first patch we were looking at. Okay, so we're back to the first patch. And what I have is a kind of complex LFO waveform generated by the Rampage. And what I have is the Rampage set in cycle mode. And I have two different LFO setups, one with a medium short rise, slightly longer fall, another one with a longer rise and a medium fall. And I'm saying pick the max of letting these two run independently. And whatever the max value is between these, that's what's driving this. That is the purple waveform here. The blue line is the threshold on my comparator. Notice that every time this melody goes above the line, this jumps up. And listen to what the effect is. What's happening is that my oscillator is going up an octave whenever it's in this range, and it's down an octave whenever it's on the bottom half of the range. So all I've done is taken the output of this comparator, and I've run it to this dual tenuverter. And I'm using the attenuverter because normally this voltage, as you can see here in the scope, it goes up to 5 volts and down. Well, our oscillators are at 1 volt per octave, so I've used the attenuverter to dial it down. And now I'm going to get rid of the cable opacity so you can see this a little bit better. Notice what's happening here because I'm measuring the output. I've got it pretty darn close to one octave between C4 and C5. So what I've done is I've taken this 5 volt output from the comparator and I've just dialed it down to a 1 volt. And then, because the even VCO has a summing double voltage per octave input when they sum together, I automatically have it jump up an octave. And then over here, I have a second oscillator that I've tuned up a fifth. Maybe I'll tune it down a fourth here. And I have it also jumping up and down an octave. Now what might be interesting to do is mimic this here. And this go there, and this output come from the other side. Now I have my second oscillator shifting octaves in the opposite way as the first one. That's just one of the things we can do with a comparator. Let's see what else they can do. Okay, here we have a pretty basic patch. And what this is is just a clock going to a Turing machine, giving us some uh, random output, which I've attended inverted to hold into a fairly narrow range within an octave or so. It goes through a uh, quantizer to pick out what notes we're gonna have. This, you've seen me build patches like this many, many, many times. And because the clock is a trigger, not a gate, I like using the rampage because I have a trigger mode that I can create an envelope to control my VCA. If I wanna make longer, longer notes, I can just lengthen the fall. But I'm purposefully using, using a sine wave. Probably the simplest waveform we can get. And you guys remember one of my favorite phrases. What loves complex waveforms? Filters love complex waveforms. So, let's take this and put it through my favorite filter. And I'll tell you, let's go into cycle mode. Start it off. Now, notice this is cycling, and we're not really hearing anything. 
not much is happening. And the reason for that is that the uh, sine wave is not a very complex waveform. Let's do something with a little more complexity. Let's do a triangle wave and see what happens. See how we can hear it. So complex waveforms sound better with filters. What does that have to do with comparators? Okay, I'm going to feed this very simple sine wave as an input to the comparator. Now think about this. What's happening is we have an audio signal here. Let's look at that on a scope real quick. Yeah, we have a sine wave on a scope. Over here, we're going to set we're going to set a limit and every time this waveform is above the limit, this is going to go up and every time it crosses below. So what we're actually going to do is convert this Oh, wrong one. There we go. into a square wave. So what's that sound like? And hey, let's uh, duplicate that. Let's run that through a filter. And maybe have the resonance uh, modulate for a little bit. So we took a very simple, clean waveform, this blue sine wave, and look, we've completely matched a square wave to that sine wave by using a comparator. What else can it do? Okay, so here I have set up kind of a fun patch. The first thing you hear is a drone. That drone is the Sonus Modular drone oscillator with a whole bunch of just random oscillation on it. But the big thing that's happening over here is I have two voices, two really different voices. The first one is a music thing modulator, or music thing modular Turing machine going into a macro oscillator that's playing chords. And you don't hear it yet because I have it muted, but that's then split into a dry and then two delays. And it sounds a bit like this. Now the second voice over here is the quad Euclidean rhythm taking three of the channels and driving three different resonators. Very similar to some patches we've done before. In fact, I think the episode six patch was similar to this. But now let's hear what that sounds like. and the two of them together. Okay, so that's my bass. I have these three different voices. I'm gonna let the drone just go forever. Over here, however, what I have is tides. And I'm using an LFO to pulse the freeze to make the to make the LFO even slower. And I folded it to get this kind of interesting, weird shape. And notice that as this is below this line, the comparator is low. And now it's gonna cross over and it goes high. Well, what I've done is I've used the positive side 
of the comparator to drive this rampage to have a slow rise. It's going to stay on for as long as this is up. And then once it drops like that, it's going to slowly fall down. That will give us this. So you can see that the first voice is coming in here. The second voice, however, is on the opposite one. Remember how we have these flipped gates? Okay, now it's below the threshold. So I have another I have another long uh, attack, long decay, and this one is turning on the second voice. So now let me unmute that. And when this purple line comes below the blue, we'll start hearing the second voice. and negative essentially comparator along with rampage to mix these two different voices so what I'm doing is as this goes high I'm driving the input of rampage when that signal goes high it will rise at this speed and stay on until it cuts out when it cuts out it will fall at this the output of that is driving a VCA as you can see right here say random, but I'll say in an uncertain way. And as I change that level, the level of the blue line, it'll change when I flip to one voice, when I flip to the other. So I hope you're enjoying the episode on comparators. Comparators are not a super sexy module, but it's something like a, a sequential switch where when you first learn about it, you think, yeah, okay, it switches things, big deal. Or a comparator, okay, it compares two signals, big deal. But as you start thinking about different ways you can use it, you realize, wow, this is a really cool utility method, a utility module. I bet you're going to find all sorts of new places to put this in your patches. So until next time, stay curious and play with comparators. <laughs>